Will Robert Kiyosaki finally be right? Now, this guy has been calling for sell for the longest of time, and we all know that. All right, he was perfect back then in 2008 when whereby they called for Lehman Brothers and stuff like that. And I love his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But the thing is this, ever since then, he's been calling for sell for the longest of time, and seemingly the market has been going up. But this time around, with this uh, Bond King, Jeffrey Gunlock, giving his view, I kind of believe that maybe the Bruin clock will be right for another time this time around so will the market crash let's enter this video because this is my 880 video let's go all right before we go into that disclaimer apply as usual and thank you aims for the kind sponsorship now first of all thank you guys for all the great support now plus this video this will be my 880 video right i'm waiting for my 888 video and i definitely have been a long journey with us but i'm very thankful for all the support you're given to us so please like subscribe and share this video with your friends let's hit the new bell amount milestone in the coming future all right so let's go now now first of all let's just go into some detail first all right the 10-year yield. Now, this 10-year yield has been coming down since the start of, let me bring a look in. Since the November period, the 10-year yield have been coming down all the way, bridging 4.6, bridging 4.3, 4.1, and now we are at a very important 61.8 Fibonacci level. Now, this is the 4% level and it's holding for a few days right now. Now, based on the RSI, you can see it's actually at the lower end of the RSI. Now, usually when this sort of thing happens, we, we do know that that is a form of an oversold indication. So what if the yield do actually move up? What could be the reason? Mm, of course, it's quite impossible right now because everybody knows that the Federal Reserve is going to cut interest rate next year, right? So for the yield to recover is kind of tough unless something really drastic happened. And for some time, a reason, usually when things, when RSI comes to about 30 level, usually something will just happen on its own. Don't you agree? And when that all happens as well, right, the, once the yield recover, this will actually bring the stock market back down again. So traders, you need to watch out for this. So this is the first clue and uh, probably why I think Robert Kiyosaki could be correct. Now, next thing to watch out for is this, Jeffrey Gunlock. Now, Jeffrey Gunlock is the uh, CEO of Double Line, all right, it's a hedge fund, and he's known to be the bond king, all right? So he's saying that right now, that it's unlikely for the investors to go from a risk-free six-month T-bill to the Magnificent 7 at the massive PE, which is definitely true. Now, most of the PE ratio for the massive uh, Magnificent 7 is at a very high level right now. So it's kind of tough. And with the all-time high of the Dow Jones, right, it's kind of crazy to join in right now. So that's the reason why he believed that once the 10-year Treasury yields plunge below 4%, this could represent a fire alarm, all right, who believe that a recession is coming next year. So again, it seems that, right, with he saying this plus Robert Kiyosaki feel and my personal take, I think that we probably going to see a recession coming soon. So let's take a look right now. This is a chart back then in 2018 and 2019. Now we saw what happened back then where the Fed was tightening up and then after that, with the second double top, the pause came in, then that's where the market collapsed. But of course, we all know that that was because of COVID. So now, are we going to see the same thing right now? Well, apparently not, because now the uh, market is right, seemingly is looking for a higher level. Now, this is not S&P 500, this is a global Dow, yeah? So if you look at it, right, what's the post effect? Now, this is a chart that I created for you guys. Take a look. You can see that, right? Once the Federal Reserve was hiking rate, tightening up, right, the U.S. market did not go down at all. In fact, it went up. So this again tells you that when Fed is tightening, it doesn't mean that the market is bad. In fact, it's already telling you the economy is doing good. But it's interesting. Once they start to pause the interest rate, right, at a high level, that is where the economy will get into a, what we call a slumber. And once they start to cut interest rate, seemingly, right, the market will have initial upside first, as you can see. We have that initial upside. Then after that, the sell, right, the market will really slam down. Now, we've seen it before in 2008 during Lehman Brothers. And apparently, it happened again back in 2019, whereby again, when the Fed was basically increasing interest rate, the Dow Jones was going up. So again, it actually tells you that when the Federal Reserve is increasing interest rate, it doesn't mean the stock market will go down. In fact, it actually goes up. And we said it before. And interestingly, so what happened, you can see that when they start to um, pause the interest rate, and once they start to cut interest rate, you know uh, that you notice that the market really slammed down. So of course, you can argue again that was during the COVID crisis. But 
to me it's all right it seems that like every time when such thing happen something will off nowhere happens so you find it very interesting so now where are we we are now at the interest rate going up so that's where the stock market is rising can you see that and the thing is this right now we have the pause happening so the question mark is this if this is going to repeat as a pattern is it the amount of time we're going to see the market coming down so again and again this is very very important right now for all the traders okay so traders you need to be watching this huh? very important Okay, so with that example now, let's just look at more important facts for today. Today is going to be a blockbuster video. Let's go into more detail. All right, so this is the S&P PE ratio right now, and currently it's not attractive at all. Now, the P ratio of the S&P right now is about 22, and with a multiple expansion of 13% in 2023. The average P ratio for S&P since 1989 is 19.2. So we are like three points higher than the average. And so therefore, right, if you ask me now, it's a good time to buy in the market, I would really think that you should really consider to slow down your buying. In fact, it's all right. Goldman Sachs have changed their tune. They were all looking about this, basically no interest rate cutting by only late part of the year, but now they change. Apparently, believe now there'll be three consecutive 25 basis point cut in March, May, and June. Now, this is very fast change because they're looking at end of the year, right? Now, they change from two cuts to three cuts, and it's as early as March. So, I just feel that something is wrong here. It seems that like they probably know something that we don't know at all, or they know something that is going to happen and yet we don't know, and this is where it gets very scary. And in fact, it's all with the analysts now, so they are all expecting the bull market to continue. They're giving the net earning revision much higher than this. We've seen it before. Whenever they do a revision like this, while the earning is actually still going down, right? Usually, it's a very clear set tone for a potential recession. So now the thing is this, leading economic indicators are contracting sharply, but yet the analysts seemingly know something that we don't know, or they just basically doing their job to make sure that they write as much as possible on the high side, and then when people come in to buy, they can sell to them. Well, I don't know about this, but it seems that someone is not telling the truth because now the S&P 500 index versus a job opening, we have a very clear divergence. Look at it right now. We are definitely uh, we've got, we are currently in, uh, experiencing a strong sign of deterioration in the labor markets and uh, rising ongoing concern about the narrowing leadership in U.S. equity market. So now the thing is this, with the S&P still surging, but yet the job opening is coming down. Now we've seen it before, when the job opening is coming down, you see over here, that is back in uh, 2020. All right, let me swing to you. Right, when the job opening is going down, it's saw where the S&P was going up. Then after that, what happened? Bang, the market started to sell because the job opening collapsed. Now again, you may say that was the lame, this it was the, it was a COVID crisis, but again, we have seen it before right here as well, that they move in tandem. So if you're telling me now there's a big disparity, it's going to be quite clear that right, someone is lying or someone is holding the market and it's just a matter of time things will get really out of hand. So that's the reason why I think that you should consider taking profits and buying into the market. Now let's go into Robert Kiyosaki. Okay, now this guy said this in 2010. Okay, he said that this is it. The market is going to sell, but the market went up. In 2012, he said that again. Then in 2016, so down only from here. That means he was expecting the market to go down. But we all know that in 2016, after that, when Donald Trump became the president, the market had one way, and that's all the way up. And of course, wakes up every day and just want to predict how the market is going to crash. And again, in 2021, he repeated, this is it, this is it again. And every time this is it, it never happened. So that's why we will make a mockery of it. I say that it has successfully predicted 22 of the last three market crashes. Okay, all right. Now, I'm not thinking against Robert Kiyosaki. I love his books. I also watched, uh, the, I mean, also the, the other book is that where he was uh, doing his interview again with Donald Trump. I like that book too. But the thing is this for him as a market uh, a market. Uh, financial contender. I've been writing this. I've been watching all the different articles. I do come across Robert Kiyosaki many times, calling for sell, calling for sell, calling for sell. But it never, never happened. But I kind of believe that this time around, maybe he's going to get it correct. So we can see that on YouTube itself, we can see that every time uh, the different part of the month of the year, it will say that the biggest stock market crash on the way, be careful, a biggest crash on the way, and so forth, right? Never, never happened. So that's why I can say that guys can do your own research to check more about him. 
But uh, importantly, right now, uh, recently, he says that now we are having a bank credit issue. He believes that, um, okay, when I have mouse issue right now. Okay, he says that now the bank credit has just sold like 2008. He said, get them cash out of the market. He said that now gold will break through. Now, gold is correct. He got it correct very well. And he said back then in September, he said bye-bye to Bitcoin and US dollar. No, both of them went up. So again, he has his merits, but again, this downside is kind of more, right? And not too bad. He has 2.4 million followers on his Twitter. So again, I repeat myself one more time. I'm nothing against him. In fact, I feel that he's going to be right this time around. But just that, guys, you need to pay attention to details and you shouldn't be just following a celebrity. You need to really make your do your risk management. Then you go into it, right? So with that, you can see that someone actually did his homework to tell you that how Robert, Robert Kiyosaki do his prediction timeline. He said that back then in, in April 2011, he says that the economic crash is going to come in right now. It's not over yet, but yet the market surged all the way. Then after that, he says that in this May 2015, he said that there'll be a crash coming in. And then what happened? The market did sell. But then again, after a while later, the market recovers. And of course, here itself, he said the real estate will crash. We went higher and so forth, guys. So every time he said the market will crash, the market actually went higher. So to me itself, it's just a matter of time that he will be right one day. So because of that, right, you can look at it right now, the SMP versus the presidential election cycle, it seems that, right, it's odds against everybody because it seems that based on the uh, the presidential cycle, we should have a very strong 2024. So if this actually happened, then that means that Robert Kiyosaki, Jeffrey Gunlock is wrong. But to me itself, right, I just kind of feel that, right, um, yes, the election will definitely be a very good uh, reason, a catalyst for the stock market to go higher. But with the market already so high right now and seemingly like on a steroid, I just feel that there'll be some selling soon. So could it be because they wanted to prove themselves for this year, they just pumped the market irrationally much higher than expected now and it may run out of steam in the near term. So I just feel that right, traders, you shouldn't be jumping in the bandwagon without focusing on the current situation. Now, of course, the dot plot has shown that, right, there will be rate cut as early as March, May, June period. So I understand that. But the thing is this, we really must see why are they cutting. And if they are cutting, it's because they know that something's bad is happening. Then, of course, this bad could actually affect the stock market first before the second thing can be done. And of course, right now, right, we can see the Magnificent Sevens are now coming down, even though the Nasdaq is trying to stay firm. And we also know that the S&P performing itself, right, it does show that there could be a high chance of a divergence between them. So again, Again, traders, you need to be careful because you don't want to be caught on the wrong side. Even though people are calling for sell, you have to do your own research and your own risk management, all right? And last but not least, the property market is not performing. In fact, itself, the current new one family horses are sold at a very low level and this low level is as low as what happened in 1970s. So think about this. No wonder the Federal Reserve must cut interest rate. If not, the mortgages will just kill off everyone and people will definitely go crazy on this and this will be very bad for a, any politician like Joe Biden who wish to continue as the president. So to me, the reason why there will be a market pullback. I think it will happen maybe 5 to 15%. Then after that, when things smooth down, Fed Reserve cut interest rate, all is good. Then after that, they start the stock market recover and we have probably Joe Biden being the president once again. So with that, I would like you to share this video, like and subscribe. This is Kel signing off. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.